If we learn anything, we learn a lot. We learn a lot. If we learn anything, when it comes to being black in America, cultural presence does not equal systemic power. We shape this culture, this country's culture. We shape its language. We shape its aesthetic. We shape its music. There has been a black artistic renaissance thanks to this movement. Thank you. We are seeing more black people on television than we have before. We have black presidents. And we know because this country will never let us forget that. <laughs> and this moment right here, right now, that we're in is because we had the first black president. And for the first time, people in this country realized that perhaps things were going to change. White people in this country realized that perhaps their grasp and their grip was slipping. And so what we're seeing now is the backlash of that. Do you hear me? In the last seven or eight years, we started Black Lives Matter and remember that this movement really was just a Facebook post at first. You ever wonder about your own personal power of Facebook post? By at least the guys of the two scholars saw the three last words of that post, Black Lives Matter, and thought, this could be something. And then it lived online for many, for many, many months with very little action. Until people like Lena came, until people like Don came, until the co-founders came, and then it turned into a global movement, and an idea became a vision, and a movement actualized around it, and here we are today. That is the power of people. Every effort has been made to shut this movement down, yes? Yes. Every effort. And so, because this is a black meeting, I want to tell you what you already know and affirm what you feel about black love. Black love is the most expensive kind of love. There's no other love like it. And I'll tell you why. Because our love had to be bigger than the hate the world for us. There's no other word like the word nigger. There's none. There's none. And so we knew that we had to make a love that never existed before. A love more expansive than the hate, bigger than the hate. And sometimes that need, that love, it feels, it feels like it could crush you. Because we feel the weight of every stolen breath, of every stolen life. And so we have to come together because it can only feel crushing when we're holding it alone. And our children were never meant to carry something so heavy under such monstrous conditions. And so we love, and that's all this movement has ever been, an invitation into love, do you hear me? Yes. And so we come together and this movement was a reminder, like the future that Kendrick spoke about, like the future Baba Akili spoke about, like the future Melina spoke about. It's a reminder, and to all of you that took up this challenge and that, in this call, a reminder that that person that we dreamed that we could be, that person that we wondered if we could be when we read about those heroes from the 60s and the 70s and the movement we thought, man, I wonder what I would have done had I been there. Right. You're the answer. You are the answer. You are the reminder that it is never too late to become the person you always thought that you could be. And every time that this community and this state and this country tries to forget that, we remind them. And it is a shock to the system, the kind of invitation that we bring, the kind of implementation that we represent, one that steps out of fear and into power, oh, it is a scary thing. And so we have to walk together, we have to walk strong because just like we are living in the nightmare of the colonial imagination, and just like this is the backlash from the first black president, I promise you that the retribution for this rise up is going to be hard and it's going to be swift. And I want us to live. I want us to live. 
And so we have to be mighty. And we have to be strong. And the only way we do that is when we are together. We are the best resource that we have. We are all that we've ever needed. That is why every effort that we made to keep us apart. That is why we live in segregated hierarchical communities. And so we must seek each other out. Build, grow, be brave. And there's gonna come a time when this movement is not popular anymore. And the thousands will turn to a few. And so my challenge to you all here today is that sometimes the organizing work feels like that of a boxing club. And every time that I train, and every time that I hit the bag, and every time I see all these young kids come in and they come out, and all these older folks that come in and they come out. And that's what we are, we're like the coaches. And every now and again you get a champion. And people come in and out. You get a champion. And that champion takes that gym, that club, that coach to the next level. So my call to you is to be the champions of this work. To be the champions of this time. Because that's what it's going to take. To be the heroes that you always dreamed of. And the hero that you needed because that's all activism ever is. Activism is being, for someone else, the person that you needed most in your most vulnerable moments. Right. I'll tell you something. Activism doesn't build character. It reveals character, and you all are a revelation. And so, I want you to remember this feeling. I want you to remember the beating of your heart. That sound that is more profound than any stringing of words together, than of any obituary I want you to live. Do you feel your heart? When enough of us come together, it becomes a drumbeat. And we march. And we become warriors. And don't ever let anyone tell you anything different. Because that's what it takes to do this work. Courage. We don't live in the absence of fear. No, courage is the ability to move through it, to harness it, and to use it. And every single one of you, your entire lives, have been taught to shrink, to contort, to become something other than what you were. And then what you are, you have to hold your tongue, bite your lip, smile when you wanted to rage, laugh when you wanted to weep, fit into a script that was never meant to you for you, into the limits of someone else's imagination. No, this is the end of that. This is the end of that. The moment that you join this movement, I don't know if you know it, the moment that you put on a Black Lives Matter shirt, the moment that you uttered the words, we're married. <laughs> we're married now. Yeah. You thought this was a connection? No, it's a commitment. Yeah. You feel me? You thought this was a connection? This is a commitment. And so, we have to look out for each other with the full love and the full wonder and the full magnificence that each and every one of us carry the story of us they tried to erase. I look at you all and I see endless possibility. And when you look in the mirror at home, I need you to see that too. And when people look at us, that's what they're gonna see. And they're gonna flee and they're gonna rage and they're gonna try to make us small. But no, remember that you know too much now. Because the moment that you said Black Lives Matter, you became married, you became wedded, you became committed to something bigger than you. Nobody can ever make you small again. 
No one can ever make you shrink. No one can ever make you less than what you are. And like you rewriting your own stories, Black Lives Matter is rewriting the story of blackness in America, in America because nobody understands better than black people in this country and all over the world the full preciousness and the full precarity of life. No more imperiled lives. No more imperiled lives. I want to live in a world, and we must live in a world, and we will make a world where our strength is not determined by how much suffering we can endure. Thank you. 